a look at the London crime firms. Now, before we get into the actual crime groups themselves, we have to look at the fact that there is a common trait shared between them, and that they all developed in impoverished, white, working-class areas, mostly the East End of London. So, what makes the East End so popular for the development of organized crime? Well, to figure that out, we actually have to go back in time a little bit, looking at the people that lived in the East End during the early 20th century. At this point in history, most of the people living in the East End were immigrants who were working low-skilled jobs, such as shipbuilding or clothing making. This means that during the economic depression in the interwar era, the time between 1918 and 1939, the people of East London had to get creative with how they made their money, which, in turn, led to the flourishing of organized crime stemming from the East End, with the Messina Brothers, Sabini Syndicate, Hoxton Gang, Elephant and Castle Mob, and the Birmingham Boys all entering the industry. After the decline of these organizations, the Comer Gang, led by Jack Spot Comer, came into the spotlight in the late 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Now, the Comer Gang took part in many of the same enterprises as the interwar organizations did. However, most notably, the Comer Gang financed and quite possibly masterminded a plan to raid the British Overseas Airway Corporation warehouse at the London Heathrow International Airport on July 28, 1948. Unfortunately for the Comer Gang, this attempt failed when the London Police Department intercepted the raid in what is now known as the Battle of Heathrow. This failure, combined with the legalization of bookmaking, led to the fall of the Comer Gang, which in turn gave room for the rise of the Richardson Gang and the Cray Twins, who ran the organization called The Firm. The Richardson Gang was active in the 1950s and 1960s, conducting criminal activities such as fraud, racketeering, usury, theft, and stolen goods. However, what they're most known for are their torturous ways of punishment, such as pulling teeth using pliers, cutting off toes using bolt cutters, and nailing victims to the floor using six-inch nails. The Richardson Gang's main rivals were two high-profile nightclub owners, the Cray Twins, Ronnie and Reggie, who ran the firm. Now, the firm were involved in armed robberies, arson, protection rackets, and assaults. However, what they did most notably, and what would eventually result in Ronnie and Reggie being in prison for the rest of their lives, were the murders of Jack the Hat McVitie and Richardson Gang higher-up George Cornell. After the Richardson Gang and the firm went into decline in the late 1960s, a new organization came to the forefront in East London, the Arif family. A family of Turkish descent, the Arifs are the first organization I have mentioned in this video that are still around today. In fact, not only are they still around, they are regarded by some as the strongest organized crime family in Britain at this time. It is believed that Dogen Arif, one of the seven Arif brothers, is currently running the organization from prison. It should be noted that only four of the seven brothers have served major prison sentences. Bakir, Dogen, Dennis, and Mehmet, with only two, Bakir and Dogen, currently serving time. It is difficult to know how far the Arif's reach is. However, it is known that the Arif's have a strong, lasting tie to the Turkish Mafia and have an agreement to distribute drugs throughout London on their behalf. However, historically speaking, the Arif gang has also been known for theft, coming to prominence in the late 1970s due to bank robberies and armored car robberies. The organization's shell companies include restaurants, clubs, and pubs. Currently, one of the Arif family's allies is the Adams family, aka the Clerkenwell Crime Syndicate. This is led by Terry, Tommy, and Patsy Adams, and has a reported net worth of 200 million British pounds. The Adams family also is a key player in the London drug trade, but, unlike the Arifs who go to the Turks for their drugs, the Adams partner with a handful of South American drug cartels to get their product. On the more nefarious side, the Adams family has at least 25 murders attributed to them since their inception in 1980. At times, they have aligned themselves with other organizations for the sake of carrying out a crime, 
like the Brinks Matt robbery of 1983. During this heist, six thieves stole 26 million British pounds worth of gold, diamonds, and cash from a warehouse of the Brinks Matt Corporation. Most of it was never recovered. Mad Mickey McAvoy masterminded this theft. However, it appeared that both the heiress and the Clerkenwell Syndicate were involved in the proceedings, possibly funding the operation as a joint venture. Mad Mickey was a free agent in many respects as he was not directly associated with any criminal organization. This is an interesting trend that seems to be becoming ever more popular throughout London. This is a radical change in the business model of being a gangster in London. Decreasing are the number of big organizations that run illegal activity in the city, and growing are the number of free agents and small teams that are contracted to carry out these crimes. These independent contractors and small teams make up half of Britain's crime syndicates. According to a 2013 study by the England National Crime Agency, of the 5,300 syndicates in the country, half had seven members or less. And as always, thanks for watching.